right? If I if I just made the right decisions, if I thought things through correctly, if I did everything I could, then shit happens. <laughs> Yeah, well, one of my questions, I think Sarah kind of touched on a little bit already. Um, I wanted to be a little more specific with it uh, in how your perception of poker has changed since writing the book, um, where you came in as a novice player, you never, you know, picked up a hand, never really studied at all. Um, and then you, you, you know, study and you practice and you go and you uh, become a, a winning player. Um that must be kind of a whirlwind a little bit. Is that your experience? Has it been? Uh, yeah. You know, um, yeah. It, it is a whirlwind. And the one thing I will say is that the more I play, um, the harder the game becomes. <laughs> so it's not one of these things where I'm like, oh, I'm a good poker player now. Um, it's a constant I suck. Oh, wow. You know, I didn't realize that I still have this to learn and this to learn and this to learn. And that's one of the beauties of it. I think anything worth doing is something where you're constantly being challenged and constantly growing and you constantly learn that there are more levels to this. So it's how I feel about writing. You know, when people ask me, oh, you know, your second book must have been easier than the first and third book must have been, you know, easier than the second when you're working, you know, Next one's going to be a piece of cake. No, that's not how it works at all. Every single thing, every piece of writing is harder than the last one because your challenges are different. Your goals are different. Your understanding is different and you want to keep growing. Um, and if you just write the same thing over and over, you know, you're a shitty writer <laughs> and you're not really growing as a writer. You're not challenging yourself and your readers are probably going to abandon you at some point. Um, I mean, I'd abandon me. And so, you know, and every single time there's this feeling of, wow, I don't think I can do this, right? And I have a blank page in front of me and I don't think I, I'm going to be able to fill it um, no matter what kind of writing I'm doing. And poker is kind of like that. <laughs> every single time, you know, I still feel like there's so much to learn. There's so much nuance. There's so much this is still teaching me and I have so far to go. Um, and it can there's still so many rewards and I'm not just saying monetary rewards, although those would be nice. Um, poker gods, if you're listening, but anyway, <laughs> um, the, you know, just the, the sheer joy of realizing, you know what, I, I did this well, right. I, I played well. I, I really did something creative. Um, I challenged myself and I got to the next level. Um, that's something that poker, I didn't realize that poker would be like that, um, and it is. Um, and so it's a much, it's a much deeper game than I ever could have appreciated. Because I definitely, <laughs> early on, there was definitely a moment in my learning curve where I was like, "Oh, I get this. This is easy. All right, cool." <laughs> yeah, I think that happens. With that. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Get but it's so interesting too because you you were put really under a microscope right from the beginning, right? So basically, yeah. the first event that you came to, it was like everyone right. Maria's writing a book like yeah. she's getting tutored by the best in the game like yeah. everyone pay attention to her immediately which I think has probably shaped your experience in ways that that none of us could understand yeah I, th I think that's very true um and I also you know it, it's not it's not something that Eric ever said because he's incredibly supportive but I also feel like I'm representing him and so I you know I don't want to disappoint him, but I also don't want to disappoint um, kind of the, the image of him because what if, you know, what if I do something really dumb um, and people are like, oh, that's, you know, that's how she plays. That reflects poorly on Eric. Um, and so that's a constant pressure, like I said, that he doesn't put on me, but that I feel um, even to this day. Um, and by the way, like I'm still, every time I play a big event before it, I'm still ridiculously nervous. Like I still like have, you know, butterflies in my stomach and I'm still like, it, it's like, I'm, you know, giving a huge talk. Um, I, I still have the nerves and I still have the anticipation. I still don't sleep well when I, you know, when I have deep runs at events like it, um, that hasn't changed. Um, and that's kind of great. 
And never want to lose the butterflies. I was going to say, that's probably one of the other indicators when you start losing that, that, that maybe you're, yeah. you're going to put poker down for a little yeah. while. That's a good point. Anything else, Mo? Yeah. Um, so in the trailer for the doc, the, um, I forget who it is, but someone's talking about adversity in poker. And I just wanted to get your thoughts a little bit about uh, your outlook on adversity uh, before poker and then after. Um, and this could be, you know, professionally or, you know, otherwise yeah. personal life. So you just want me to repeat shit happens again, right? Because you really like that Basically, from the yeah. trailer. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, trick you. that's, <laughs> that's why I got into poker because shit happens. You know, I, I got into poker originally as a way of helping me deal with adversity where I felt um, just totally out of control. Um, and it was, you know, it was personal issues, you know, health, um, all, all sorts of things, um, that feeling of helplessness, that feeling that, you know, you're just getting completely slammed <laughs> with, um, uh, with bad luck, um, and that you can't do anything about it. That's kind of, that's what got me into poker to try to make sense of that, to try to figure out how do I deal with that? How do I maximize skill? How do I learn to kind of understand what chance will throw in my way and deal with that? Um, and um, I think it has helped enormously. So I think it's given me coping abilities that I didn't have before. It's given me intellectual frameworks that I didn't have before. And it's actually made me a much more zen person in my day-to-day -day life because it's really taught me to let go of outcome, right? If I played the, if I played the hand well, that's all I can do. And that's all anyone can expect of me. And now, and now I'm talking about metaphorical hand, right? If I, if I just made the right decisions, if I thought things through correctly, if I did everything I could, then shit happens <laughs> and, and I can let it go. Um, and that's been very freeing. Nice. Awesome. Um, and I'll, I'll just do one more because I don't want to take up too much time. Um, yeah. You were talking about creativity a little bit earlier. Do you think that there's art to poker at like a higher level? Do you think there's artistry um, involved in some of the some of the plays that these high level players make? Um, I was watching, yeah. you know, the other day uh, from <laughs> from the WPT Championship. Um, actually, it might have been a main event hand. Sorry, it was a main event hand. Uh, that the runner-up played Adrian Attenborough, and uh, the whole thing just felt artistic to me watching it. Uh, and I was just interested to hear your thoughts on that. Absolutely, um, I think that creativity is a huge part of it. Um, I think that the best players are the players who are able to think for themselves and think independently and think in ways that will result in kind of weird lines or weird approaches that you haven't seen um, just because they see something, they see a pattern, they see kind of a, an opportunity that someone else might not have seen that um, is not something that's kind of approved in, in that particular spot. Um, and I think that that becomes more and more true um, at the highest levels of the game where like everyone knows the math, right? Everyone has worked with solvers. Right. Everyone knows, you know, what you're quote unquote supposed to do in these particular spots. Um, and what you're supposed to do isn't the right way to think about it. Um, just to go back to kind of early days of me learning poker, um, I would always, because I knew nothing, like I'd always try to get Eric to tell me how I'm supposed to play in certain situations. And how do I play this hand? Um, you know, how do I, what do I do now? And he never did. He refused. He would say, okay, well, you know, let's think this through. Like, <laughs> and, and he, and he forced me to just reason out step by step and come to a decision about what I'm going to do in this particular spot with this particular hand. However, if I played this exact same hand, even in the same position, in two weeks against different opponents, maybe I'm going to play it differently and do something different. And he said that whenever anyone tells you, you know, you're supposed to do this or this is how you play it, run because um, that's not poker and that, you know, you can, you can do that, but then you're not going to be great. And actually Phil Gelfond, who's the other person I worked with uh, the most um, did something 
similar when we, you know, I think that one of the first conversations that we had, he said, you know, you can, I can get you to be very competent very quickly because, you know, you're smart and you have a good memory and I can give you a bunch of charts and I can give you kind of a bunch of rubrics and you'll be, you'll very competently execute and you'll become, you know, a, a winning player very quickly. But I don't want to do that because over the long term, you're never going to be a good player. <laughs> you're never going to be a great player. You're going to be a competent player because you will not have known how to think for yourself. He said it's much, that's the easy way to do it. And the much harder way is to always reason out why. You know, why am I doing this? Why, what are my options? You know, why am I playing the hand this way? Why are my opponents doing what they're doing? And that's such a powerful question. You know, <laughs> those, those three letters. Sure. Um, it's, it's something that I always remember and that I kind of carry with me whenever I play. And I'm so lucky that those were the two people who taught me you know, how, how to play because they are creative. 